Hello everybody, it's me Okunior with a somewhat brief tutorial on how to live stream with Open Broadcaster Software, aka OBS. Um, like I said, the tutorial will be somewhat brief. I'm not going to go into great detail over everything because you can actually do that yourself. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, I don't mean to sound mean. Do it yourself, but um, I'll show you what, you, what I mean in a minute. Anyways, once you get Open Broadcaster Software, download link will be in the description. Um, you're going to open it up, and it won't look like this. You won't have anything in the scenes or the sources box. Don't worry about that. All you need to do is go to settings right here under the microphone. Click it, and you'll be presented with this. General, choose your language. Setting profile, don't worry about that. Encoding, okay. So, here's where stuff gets a bit uh, interesting. Uh, like I said, you can kind of find stuff out for yourself if you go... If you hover over it, it'll tell you stuff like this sets the maximum bitrate, it'll have a nice long description for pretty much everything here. But um, yeah. Before you figure out your upload speed, don't go to speedtest.net. Speedtest That's terrible. <laughs> um, the reason you might have a really good download or upload speed on speedtest.net, and you're like, okay, I'm just going to set it to high settings. Don't do that because it sends a really small packet file. Basically meaning you can download it or upload it pretty damn fast. If you go to, however, testmy.net test my slash upload, link to that will be in the description as well. You'll have much better, uh, or much different results. Probably a lot lower. So, you're here, and you're going to see Smart Test Automatic, which I'm pretty sure is just like your best testing. <laughs> Definitely not this size. This is what um, speedtest.net will probably do, and you can upload that really quickly, meaning you'll probably have like a 4 megabytes per second upload speed. Anyways, I'm just going to do the automatic test, and after it starts loading and everything. It's only uh, 3.6, that's actually a lot better than yesterday. Um, speed test would probably tell me like uh, maybe 6 megabytes per second upload speed, which was a total complete lie. <laughs> so go by this, use that as your, um, <clears throat> use that as your indicator on, as to how much you should put into these values. So quality... Obviously, the higher it is, the lower it is, will affect the general quality of the video. Uh, code. Well, actually, we'll get to this later. Max bit rates per second. Um, try and keep it within your maximum upload speed. Like yesterday, mine was 2.4, 2.5, kind of. So, I have it set to this. Um, 1800, 2000. Just so it doesn't go over. Bit rate, 256. And... Don't try and fill it completely to the max of your upload speed because you want some room just a bit left over for the frames to um, knock it all jittery and such. <laughs> Anyways, code for audio encoding, AAC, MP3. Not much of a difference you'll be able to tell, but I just have it at AAC. Anyways, go to broadcast settings. No. Okay, here. Mode, live stream. Uh, streaming service, obviously... Twitch TV. Ooh, whoops. <laughs> Let's actually go back there. That's so I can get all that. Um, stream key. What you're going to want to do is go to justin.tv. Make sure you're signed in. Go to the little arrow right here. And right under settings, go to channel. And you have show stream key. Obviously, I'm not going to click that because if you let anyone see your stream key... They can basically broadcast on your channel. <laughs> so, make sure no one sees that. Anyways, once you've copy-pasted your stream key into here, it'll show up in all black dots. Um, you should have a right. Choose a server that's not necessarily closest to you, but works best for you. Um, yep, that's pretty much all I have to say. Dashboard link, uh, don't worry about that. Auto-reconnect, if your stream goes down for whatever reason... <clears throat> And you, and you want it to come back? Just hit auto reconnect, and you can set. You can set um how many seconds until it comes back. Save to file if you want to save your live stream. So, 
you record for an hour and then it'll save it to some folder that you have a dedicated folder um, start stream hockey if you wanna uh, basically easily turn start and start off <laughs> I didn't say that right <laughs> your stream you can just have a hockey set to it okay onto video uh, custom or your monitor basically your monitor I'm pretty sure it'll be like whatever resolution it's set at but anyways once you go to your monitor you can choose which monitor you want it to detect I only have one monitor so it's just showing one if you have two um, it'd say one or two but I'm doing custom I want 720 by or 1280 by 720p keep in mind that the one on the right is the kind of indicator I believe and you can choose it to go down to 480, 360, 320, and 240p. So you have that at your availability. It'll default to um, 1280 by 720 if you had it. If you have it here, um, I don't believe you can change it, change the quality unless you're a Twitch partner. So you might want it to be 360 or 480p if you're not a Twitch partner, because I don't think not everyone will be able to watch it on 720p. Uh, with ease. FPS I have it set to 60. If your computer can handle it by all means go for it. If it can't then just set it to maybe 30. <clears throat> That's really the lowest you should go. Disable arrow that can help with FPS and some games not really that many might have trouble with arrow so keep that in mind but you really shouldn't be running into that problem very so often so I'm not having it disable arrow. Okay, audio. Uh, your device, you have to have it plugged in, I'm pretty sure. You can just refresh it by going to video if you just plug it in right now. Anyways, obviously choose one you're using. I'm using a Razer Megalodon microphone. Um, mute slash unmute, unmute hotkey, push to talk. That's all pretty self-explanatory. I, <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Mic boost if you want to um, make it easier for people to hear you on your stream. And that's basically it. One thing you have to remember though, every time you start up or close and open up open OBS, you're going to have to reselect your mic. I kind of wish you didn't have to do that, but oh well. Just make sure you have it plugged in before you start it up. On to advanced. Um, <laughs> I don't know what all this means. I really don't. Multi-thread. Um, I'm pretty sure that's just good. <laughs> now the CPU preset. You can have it ultra fast, meaning you you're gonna have good FPS, but you're sacrificing it for worse quality. <clears throat> Placebo basically means you're gonna get lower speed, but great quality. I have it set to medium. I have an i7 2600K. If you want to base it off that, uh, this don't bother worry don't worry about that. I guess VSync if you have um if you have problems with that. Anyways, so use higher quality resampling, yes. Network, use send buffer, yes. I have it set to that. And that's basically all I need for that. Now, you're going to be presented with this. So, when you want to start a, a start a scene, you go to scene, go to add scene, and I'll call it temporary. So you'll see new sources. If I got a game, I have two sources, but anyways. Go back to temporary, and I want to add a source. First, I'm going to open up uh, Terraria, let's say. Alright, so we have Terraria running in the background. Yeah, that lag. I don't know why. There we go. Uh, go to sources and add software capture source. Name it Terraria. And here we go. We have monitor capture, window capture, and all this stuff. Monitor capture, it's going to capture your whole monitor. Oh, my computer is just slowed down overall. I don't know why. Um, it'll capture your whole monitor, so... I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, what that looks like. You'll, uh, you'll be presented with this, basically. Inception. <laughs> you don't want that. That's pretty unprofessional. So, go back to Terraria Properties. You're going to want to do window capture. You can have entire window, which will basically include all of this 
and this too. The little uh, uh, <laughs> clear box with the program name and stuff on it. But I'm going to do obviously in your window because you don't want to see that. And make sure um, if you just started it up while looking for a capture source, you can just refresh it and it will show up there. So it's chosen Terraria, inner window. Capture mouse if you wanted to show the mouse. I don't want it to. Uh, sub, -region, sub region. We'll get to that later. And yeah, that's basically it. Now we'll have this since we have it in window mode. So it's basically just going to show this. Now, this is a nice. We don't want all of this behind it. We don't want all of this black stuff to show up in our stream. So we can do something really simple. Edit scene. And by dragging these, you can basically just maintain your aspect ratio with that. Now, what's really nice is if you hold shift and then drag, you can drag it freely, which is really, really, really nice. <laughs> There's no like control Z, so you can't ba go back if you had it exactly where you wanted it. Um, you can also, you have some options here, center it. Oh, let me stop editing the scene. Center it, fit the screen, and reset size, which will basically reset it to its original size. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as editing scenes go. Very simple, very nice, I love it. If you want, you can actually add a picture back here, so so you don't have these black bars. Something just to look at, just so you know. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Just do add bitmap, uh, name it whatever. And you can either get just a white background or any, any background of your color, or you can get a custom picture. So let's say uh, this Guild Wars 2 thing. Let's say I wanted that as a background. Now, what's weird is it's on top, Terraria, right? But it's not above it. It's uh, inverted. So just move to top, and it'll be in the background. You can move it around freely um, to your liking, just so you know. So something is occupying that black space right there. Now let's actually go ahead and delete that. Uh, just hit delete on your keyboard. Here we go. <laughs> Anyways, go to properties again. Subregion. Alright, so position, um, if you have a set position, set coordinates, but I don't. Basically, that'll choose a specific part of the screen. Let's actually select the region. And <clears throat> it'll show only that. That's. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Select region, it'll show only that. Okay, let's move this. That's getting in the way. That, that's, um. That the white line is above. That my cursor is above. So you can select it there. You can move it around diagonal, whatever you want. So let's say we only just want this little logo here. Hit enter. Okay. And we'll just get that. So that's basically all there is to it. Very easy to set up. I love it. Um, I don't know too much about the software, so I hope this was a good enough tutorial for you guys. You can probably definitely find a more detailed one if this wasn't enough for you. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.